Okay, so EB3. So I said before, there's different categories. I mentioned EB1. That's employment-based first preference category. That's for people of extraordinary ability and some other people. There's EB2, which is for national interest waiver and advanced professionals. And then there's EB3, which is for most other people, other workers. That means skilled workers, that means other professionals. Um, just because, so it all depends on the sponsored job. What are the requirements of your sponsored job? If all you need is one year of work experience, or two years of work experience, but no degree, then you're going to be EB3. So, for example, a cook might be EB3. Now, let's say that you are an entry-level engineer. It only requires a bachelor's degree and maybe some coursework. That's still going to be EB3. So you're in the same category as the cook. If the job requires at least a master's degree, or at least a bachelor's degree and five years of experience, then you are an advanced professional because shifted up to EB2. But if you are an advanced professional working as a cook, then you're still going to be EB3. It doesn't matter if you have those qualifications. The sponsored job is what's important. Okay? So whether you have a STEM background, it all depends on the job that's being sponsored. Okay? And the reason people want EB2 rather than EB3 because there are fewer people in EB2, it's faster, less of a backlog, and so if you get your green card, it could be years faster.